Wrong way crashes are rare, but when they do happen, they are often deadly. Take this case in Lake County. Donnell Brown was sentenced today to a minimum of 13 years in prison for driving drunk and crashing into Sky Brown last May on I-271 in Willoughby Hills, killing her. The Ohio Department of Transportation is now working to prevent those crashes, exploring every viable option from $30 signs to $30,000 radar systems. In this News 5 original, Jordan Vandenberg shows us how technology may play a role in the future. Driving is a privilege bound by rules and regulations that have been shaped and formed over decades. Turn here, merge there, stop, caution, yield, one way, wrong way. But perhaps the most basic of instructions is one that, if broken, can alter a life forever. When I first found out in the hospital, I was angry. I was very upset because this didn't just change my life, this changed many lives because family members, friends, the people who passed away, it was it was a lot. Kayla Samolis was 19, a freshman at Bowling Green State. The Parma native was going on her first spring break. It was March 2012. It was two in the morning and it was dark. She and nine of her sorority sisters were on I-75 when, for reasons unknown to anyone, a 69-year-old woman drove the wrong way. We had five girls in a car in front of us and they were able to swerve and then our car got hit head on. Samolis only knows what happened next through what she's read and what she's been told. Her memory as dark as the night sky. Samolis broke every bone in her face, shattered her jaw, her ribs were crushed and her toes were mangled. And to think she was lucky, her friends Sarah, Rebecca and Christina all died. I'm reminded daily every time I wake up and I look at my arm and I look at my face. It does suck, but am I grateful to be alive? Absolutely. We've done a lot of things to reduce the risk of wrong way crashes, but the one thing we can't control is driver behavior. Wrong way crashes, the juxtaposition of momentum and mass have vexed state and federal leaders for five decades. Despite their notoriety, wrong way crashes in Ohio have steadily declined accounting for, on average, 0.01% of all crashes statewide. Statistics show alcohol is a factor in a majority of them. Although rare, wrong-way crashes are more likely to cause serious injury. Of the 27 wrong-way crashes so far this year, there have been 23 deaths. That includes the crash on the Jennings Freeway two weeks ago and another fatal crash in Columbus earlier this month, on the very day that we interviewed ODOT's Matt Bruning. We've done a lot of things around the state of Ohio to try to catch the attention of these impaired drivers. We've put up additional signage. We put signage lower to the ground so we can catch their attention since uh, impaired drivers tend to look downward. We put additional striping. We put reflectors that reflect back red to you when you get on the highway the wrong way. In addition to signage and striping, ODOT has turned to technology. A pilot program is underway at the West 28th Street ramp on the shoreway in Cleveland. Using radar, sensors can track when a driver heads the wrong way on the ramp, causing lights to flash and police to be notified. According to Cleveland Police records, the system has been triggered a dozen times this year. Records show nine of those drivers turned around. The issue for us is not so much what to do, it's where to do it. I mean, there are 5,209 ramps uh, on our system in the state of Ohio. You know, you obviously couldn't outfit every single one of those ramps that would be uh, an extremely expensive endeavor. As technology improves and the automotive world turns to autonomous driving, the idea of tying wrong way alerts to highway digital message boards and even mobile GPS apps has been frequently floated. Those ideas are still being tested. I think there's some things that could be done to help out a little bit more, definitely more lighting. I see a lot of things like even at night, it's so dark and people can't really tell. Like sometimes I think people are going the wrong way, but it's just because we're so close in that median and you just see their lights come in. Samolis is teaching sixth grade now in Texas, but like a shadow, that night is never far behind. She incorporates her trauma and her recovery into her classroom lesson plans. March 3rd, 2012 does not define Kayla Samolis, but it will always be a part of her. Now I can never imagine my life without it. Like having those scars on my body, I'm never ashamed of them because I feel like those are literally battle scars and it tells a story and overcoming something. Jordan Vandenberg, News 5.